I'm Jim Collison, and live from Omaha, Nebraska, this is Gallup's Theme Thursday Season 2, recorded on January 12th, 2016. Theme Thursday is a Gallup webcast series that dives deep into the Clifton Strengths Finder themes, one theme at a time, and today's theme is Achiever. If you have questions, comments, or contributions during the live webcast, we do have a live chat room available for you. If you're on our live page right below the video window, we are experimenting with Blab today, and so that link is in the chat room for our live listeners. For our recorded listeners, you won't notice any difference. This, everything will stay the same, and by the way, if you are listening on the recorded piece, our RSS feed through iTunes or Android or one of those devices, we want to welcome you to Season 2. You've made it all the way through Season 1. All 34 themes are available for you in the feed if you want to go back and get those. And Mike and I will be working over the next mm, next 37 weeks. We'll be working, because we're going to take a few weeks off, Micah. We will be working through all 34 themes in Season, season 2, and we're really excited about it. Don't forget to visit the Gallup Strength Center, just gallupstrengthcenter.com, for all your coaching resources and training needs. You can also catch the video, both streaming and downloadable audio, available for, for past shows and everything we do still at the coach's blog, so coaching.gallup.com. And, of course, if you have questions and you want to, uh, you know, you have a uh, engagement uh, or some questions for a small, medium, or large organizations, send us an email, coaching at gallup.com. Micah Leibert is our uh, host today. She works as a learning development uh, consultant here on the riverfront with me. No, you're not on the riverfront with me. You're someplace else, Micah. Sometimes I am. Sometimes I, That's because I saw you last week. Welcome to Theme Thursday. Thanks, Jim. Great to be here. Um, I'm calling you from my home office in Goldsboro, North Carolina, so representing the East Coast of the U.S. today. Very good. Let's just do up front uh, season, a little bit about season two as we think about this. We're going to go in alphabetical order, so a little bit different than we did last time. We are looking for your input as well. If you're, Of course, you're listening to the recorded version. You won't be able to participate. Just a good reason to come out and join us live. A full schedule for that is available on our Eventbrite page. Really easy, gallop.eventbrite.com. You can just follow along with us and join these. A lot of you are listening recorded. We know that from the numbers that we get. And and these theme Thursdays do some 1,500 to 2,000 views every single episode. So thanks for listening to those um, as well. If you are catching us live, we encourage you to download the companion guide. That will become important every single week as we go through this. And some great opportunities. Um, uh, Micah is ready and prepared, and we've got a great season for you. But we still want to interact with you. So if you're in the chat room, you can be in the chat room either on the coach's site or we have a new service called Blab that we're using. You just have to join us live to experience that. Um, but we are looking forward to a new season and working this through with you. Micah, I think, has got some great stuff stacked up. Micah, as we think about Achiever, we've got some thoughts right off the page. Start with a little bit, uh, a little bit from you and then let's dive into the companion guide. Yeah, sure thing. So when I think about Achiever, I think about the do it theme. Um, it, it really is about that, that engine that makes us move forward. Interestingly enough, um, Achiever is the most commonly um, occurring theme in people's top five. Jim and I were talking before uh, you all joined us that I remember when I was teaching a course on strengths and I had some data that um, represented just 6,000 people completing StrengthsFinder ever, and Achiever was number one then. Um, now we've got 13 and a half million people who've completed StrengthsFinder and Achiever is still number one. A couple ideas around that, maybe it is just naturally who the, how the most of us are wired. Perhaps it is that for a long time the only way you could take StrengthsFinder was if you picked up a book that suggested you wanted to get better at something, get better at doing something. So could be a little bit of cause and effect there, but um, I think it's often misunderstood because it sounds so simple. So it's really fun to get to, I think, pick apart Achiever, really get up under what is the fabric of it and what does it really mean. Um, it, when you think about achieving, there's a couple words I think that you could use other than achieve that help you, or at least help me really understand what achievers are. The first is complete. So different from all the 33 other themes, what Achiever really focuses on is, is completion. How did I finish something? It's not just about being busy, but it's about completing things. So Achievers tend to get a real buzz, a real energy out of checking off things from their list. Not just creating a list, but really following through and, and checking things off. Um, two other synonyms I've got before we dive in, and um, one of them is realize. 
and I say synonym because I actually looked this up with a paper thesaurus, and I love the word realize. Achievers in their best mode can help add energy to something that's just an idea. And they do that by hearing sort of a concept or hearing a philosophy and immediately picking out the pieces of that that might be achievable milestones. So an example might be this morning I was on um, a call with a whole bunch of coaches from around the world and we were talking about another assessment and we were talking about what it means to um, to think conceptually and I realized you know I don't have achiever and I definitely could communicate all day long in what ifs and in imagining what's not there and in even imagining what used to be there an achiever would be able to take that conversation and say here's maybe step one through five that's going to get us to where we need to be. So there's that grounding aspect of being able to realize. And the final synonym I've got for achieve is do. There is, quite simply, an element to achiever that's just about having a great work ethic, about you know being the person who can step in and, and lead the team and get things done. We often hear that achievers actually need less sleep than the rest of the people in the world. And sadly, anytime I tell that to an achiever as I'm coaching them, they like to uh, um, push back on that and say, it's not true, it's not true, I, I, would, I would kill for some more sleep. Um, I'm pretty sure my five-month-old is showing signs of being an achiever at this point. <laughs> but it is about that do-it theme. They, um, When you talk to an achiever and they say, you know what, sometimes what's commonly misunderstood is people who say, you know, sit back and smell the roses. When they get the same kind of pleasure that non-achievers get from smelling the roses, achievers get from maybe trimming the roses or, or learning about the roses or doing something around it. So not quite as... Um, a balance for an achiever is typically involving doing things rather than sitting and sitting by on the on the sidelines and watching things get done. Good. Let's um let's spend some time. You know, I was I was asking in the chat room, achiever, where it's at for you. We've got a few number ones that are out there. We'll invite those number ones to join us here a little bit later. Micah, where does it sit for you in in your top five? Or in um, your top three, four? So not there. Uh, not in there. fact, when I <laughs> when I first joined Gallup, I was walking around and I was seeing that everyone around me seemed to have Achiever, and I thought, I can't let anyone know. Um, I think for me, it's like number nineteen or twenty. Um, you, you and I are the same. Twenty-one for me. Uh, yeah. as well. In the last season, I always used to joke that everything was in my top 10. I'm going to come clean this year and <laughs> give you some real numbers, but 21 for me. We do see this very, very high at Gallup. You're, you're right, as we think about um, all the folks that are there. It's number one, and I think you mentioned this, or maybe you didn't mention this yet, where, where it sits in the database. And so, very, very common. Uh, let's go, let's dive into the companion guide. Sure thing. So again, make sure you download that companion guide. Really the thinking behind this was we have such great information in our experience as coaches. Uh, our coaches who call in and offer their experience add just a wealth of knowledge. Um, so there's a lot of information out there that just isn't captured and we wanted to give you the opportunity to really follow along with us through season two and take something away with you that you're going to use. So download the companion guide. Um, if you're a, a typist and you like to keep a soft copy, then the and type all over it. Um, I had to change the font size because I like to keep things on my computer and I just had so much to say. So um, if, you, if you're somebody who needs that tactile experience of actually writing down, highly encourage you to, to print that out. If you're listening to the recording right now, hit pause, print it out because we've got a lot of great information that you're going to want to take with you. I had an awesome um, participant in one of our uh, certified coaching uh, trainings lately who who came and she had created her own companion guide. Um, so Amanda, thanks for that. Uh, but we've actually done all the work for you and given you a shell and we're going to do a really good job of following that. So what you'll find in this companion guide, as you can see um, if you've downloaded, at first you've got just the, the brief definition. That's the same definition that you'll find on our Clifton Strengths Finder Quick Resource Guide. It is just a few sentences. So that's also the definition that you're going to see if you are on if you're downloading the different reports on the theme sequence report. That's it, that's what you'd see real briefly here, where it says people exceptionally talented in the achiever theme work hard and possess a great deal of stamina. 
they take immense satisfaction in being busy and productive. Now when I speak with achievers, sometimes they get stuck on that final sentence because uh, if they're in a real mature state of their achiever theme, they've realized that there's a difference between being busy and being productive. So sometimes that trips people up there, um, but remember what you're looking at when you're looking at a theme is simply a cluster of naturally occurring patterns of behavior. And sometimes that means that we just like to be busy. I, I just need something to do. That is achiever. That does lead to success. So it's still there. It's still accurate, even if maybe it doesn't come out that way for you. Um, so let me, Travis says in the chat room, he says it's three for him and he hates sleeping. Like sometimes achievers feel like sleeping is wasting time. I know I feel that way sometimes. Like I could be doing things. So go back to your sleep concept. That may be one of those guilty things that our friends face is like, you know, you need to rest, but I got to get stuff done, right? You know, I think there's a difference in rest if you're an achiever. There's a difference in what replenishes you, what, what recharges you. If you don't have achiever and you're a human being, now tell this to my five-month-old because I can't get it through his head, but actually sleeping and shutting down your body is how you recharge. If you do have achiever, sleeping and shutting down might not be what replenishes you quite so much. Please don't take this as health advice. Everyone needs to sleep. But you know, if you think about what, what nourishes you, what feeds you, where do you get your energy, achievers derive energy from doing. Um, I don't know if that means that there's a direct link to if you need to sleep or not, because in, in reality we all should be sleeping. Um, but it is, you know, how, what recharges you. And for achievers, it's that forward progress that they're constantly hungering for. Good. Let's talk about raw versus mature. So um, when we mention raw versus mature, it, it's just a quick reminder of what we're doing here. Um, every theme exists within us all the time. It's not just when we're being successful. It's not just when we're doing them on purpose. We live with our themes when we're successful, when we're engaged, but also when we're hungry, angry, lonely, tired. Uh, and that concept of how do we move people from awareness to application, sorry, um, really comes down to how do you add some intention and some uh, practice and some purposefulness around the themes that you have. Uh, before it's a strength, it's just a talent. It's just something that's there. So in its rawest form, it could be something that gets in the way, uh, gets in your way or gets in the way of others. Sometimes achiever can be raw. Um, and raw achiever uh, can look like, I think, busyness, whereas mature achiever can look like productivity. There's a difference there. Um, and to, to explain that, I think that raw achiever will just look for anything I can possibly do to do it. Again, they're hungering for the do, whereas mature achiever is looking for what's aligned with my goals, what's aligned with maybe the people that I'm serving or the other people who I'm in a relationship with. How do I make sure we're not just spinning our wheels sort of on a treadmill, but um, that every step that we're taking and checking off is getting us to a place we need to go. Um, Another piece around raw achiever, I, um, I, I coach quite a bit of um, high-level executives, and I'm coaching a team right now in a, about a, a three-year ongoing process it's been so far. And when we first started coaching them, one of the things that they told me they really struggled with was they have a lot of achievers on their team. And to some of the non-achievers, it felt like there was this bias toward action. Like any idea that came up um, that was a little more conceptual didn't quite get the same kind of airtime as an idea that was a little more obvious that we could take take a stab at right right away. Um, and so I think the raw achiever has just an action bias. You, you hear quickly what can be done and you jump to that. You appreciate what's doable and what's obvious. Whereas the mature side of that, the mature achiever sees the action within the bigger idea even if it's not quite so obviously doable. There, um, think about honing your ear if you're an achiever, honing your ear so that you're hearing what can be done, even if it doesn't seem like here's step one, two, and three. Um, raw achiever can be a lone workhorse, um, and that comes from your ability to do things. Um, you might be busy, you might be doing more, you might be asked to do more than other people because of your work ethic, and very often it's easy to say, you know what, I can't wait for all of you who don't have achiever, I'll just do it on my own. Um, the mature side of that is I can lead the charge. So you can, you can be out there working on your own, which is fine. Perhaps a more mature way of doing that is helping set the pace. 
And, and that's part of our expanded definition on still the top uh, paragraph in that companion guide is I can be a pace setter. I can be someone who's tuned into what have we done and what have we left undone. And that can be a way that I help the team move forward. Um, raw achiever can be impulsive. It can be about doing in any direction. How messy does that sound, Jim? Doing in every direction. Sort of 360 degrees of do. <laughs> yeah, well, it's achiever without strategic, right? It's a it's achiever without maybe, you know, competition of getting things done. It, it, that's what it sounds like to me. Sure. It's it's not directed achiever. It's just, you know, anything you throw at me, I'll say yes to and I'll get it done. Um, the mature version of that, I think, is about focusing your energy which is hard, especially when you're so attracted to things that look like they can be done. You think about swinging across monkey bars and the next one is there and it's in front of you. Um, even if those monkey bars aren't leading you to where you need to go, you could just keep going. Um, whereas uh, it really is the mature state of stepping back and saying, I'm going to take the action that needs to be taken. Um, my final piece on raw and mature, um, they can't keep up with me and maybe a sense of pride in how other people are never going to be as busy as you are or never going to be able to do as much as you can. And that pride probably comes from what we recognize in people. You know, we, we often recognize, hey, you know, if they're on their email at 2 a.m. and it's awesome and nobody else can do as much as they can. Um, and that is not a bad thing, but there's a more mature side to it. The polished version is I can set the pace for us. And that might not even be, you know, uh, uh, important if you're an individual contributor, <laughs> but it's definitely a way to polish that and think about where can it go. Another way to say that is raw achiever is tiresome. A mature achiever is tireless. In a in a raw achiever, though, in a leadership role, can be devastating or detrimental to those folks. I mean, that's. I think as a leader, that's one of those areas you really need to watch because you can be driving your people or expecting the same unfocused action that you have yourself and then expecting that from others who may not have those same themes, right? Yeah, absolutely. You know what, I, I had actually made a note of this of what can achiever look like as you um, as you make your way through through leadership. You're never going to change. You're always going to be an achiever. Your lists are always going to be very important to you. Um, a great thing to consider if you are managing others or if you're leading others is how do your lists change with your position. So there is a temptation to say I'm an achiever, I can see what needs to be done and a way I can help you is I can help you take an idea and break it down into achievable milestones. That that works for some people. I work with, with leaders who that's the gift that they give their people is they can sort of deconstruct um, chaos and say, here's, here's step one, it's okay. Another piece about that is also considering where's your list uh, targeted? So if you're, if you're a senior leader, maybe you're thinking a little bit more about your peer team in terms of what do we need to accomplish rather than thinking down to the people that you manage and the people on your team and dictating what they need to get done. Um, it also might be about changing your, your lens of focus. So we know that great leaders and great managers of people can, can very clearly explain the end goal and then allow people to get there on their own. So sometimes it's about shifting that achiever, whereas as an individual contributor, it's very easy to say, I need to do these five things today in order to get to my, my end goal. If you're a leader of others, if you're a great manager, the shift looks like I need to help people understand that success looks like these five things and then give them some space to get there on their own. Um, Ann says in the chat room, she says, uh, my achiever with individualization and strategic in my top five help me lead teams effectively. I like that 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 combo there and being able to see the see individualization, see people for who they are, individual and, and build individual plans for them strategically in a way that gives direction. So I, I love that combo. Absolutely. It's about seeing that, you know, that combination of strategic and achiever. It means you can see the whole picture and you can dive into every segment of that picture with a, with a list of what needs to be accomplished. And probably you can start at the end and explain those end expectations a little bit easier because of that ability to see the 40,000 foot view as well as the grocery list within it. No, very good. Let's think about likely pairs and unlikely pairs. 
So I'm going to stick to our statistics here. And if you're following along on that uh, companion guide, you'll notice that we just very gracefully skipped over complementary themes. That's because uh, Jim and I can can see the 40,000 foot view. We're going to come back to those. <laughs> Thank you. So, Thanks for that reminder. I blew right past it. <laughs> yeah, you, you, they never would have known. Yeah, Pay I no know. attention to the man behind good, the curtain. Good job. Good job. <laughs> So I'm going to stick to statistics here. So in a sampling of about 250,000 StrengthsFinder completes, we look at what shows up the most often and what shows up the least often with Achiever. Um, the mo statistically, the most likely theme to show up with Achiever is Learner. So think about those two together. Achiever, again, I'm getting things done. I've got quite a bit of stamina to work hard. And learner, I'm experiencing new things. I'm looking for mastery. I am hungering for a greater understanding of my world, typically in specific areas. So those are those are achiever and learner alone. When you merge them together, there's a power in it. Um, I think about the people who are very excited about knowing the syllabus of a new course because it's what am I going to learn and how am I going to learn it. Um, achiever plus learner probably adds some some very specific milestones. And if I were working with someone who had both of those, I'd want to ask them, what have you learned so far? to help that achiever slow down and recognize what's been done and what are the milestones that you're looking that are going to help you learn in the future. So that's the most common. Um, the least likely to occur, anybody in the chat want to guess what is statistically the least likely to occur with achiever? I'm going to say while they're guessing, and I don't know because I didn't cheat, I'm going to say deliberative. <laughs> That'd be interesting. It's not, it's not statistically correct, but it is interesting. <laughs> Thanks Please for playing, trying. Jim. Well, I'm not trying. I'm just trying to play along like I'm in the chat room. Oh, I love it. Um, the least likely to occur with Achiever is command. Now, my take on that, I was a little bit surprised, um, but I sort of think they come from a similar place. So Achiever is an executing theme. It's about getting things done. Um, command is an influencing theme. It's about helping, influencing other people to get things done. <laughs> and uh, my take, and this is just the, you know, my own opinion on where, where the science may come from or, or how do we explain it, I think achievers tend to um, influence by working really hard, by working alongside people, by demonstrating that they can um, do it, by sort of getting down and getting dirty. Whereas command probably very quickly gets to the exact same outcome by helping other people do that. Uh, so I think you could probably have very strong leaders of others and not ever know whether they're leading with achiever or they're leading with command because they could look very similar. Um, perhaps you know, that's sort of what I'm thinking of why they um, are very rare to show up together. No, that makes that makes a lot of sense. We did have a couple get it right in the chat room with command. A couple followed my lead with deliberation. Yeah. But uh, no, that makes a lot of sense um, from from that perspective. Anything as we think about likely unlikely pairs or as we flip over to that second page I want to get into the expanding your strength stuff but Mike anything else you want to highlight on that? Sure so if you're following along in our companion guide you're going to see a, um, a theme map on page two uh, and of Achiever and that's just where we've been able to really deconstruct it and at first we we just want to say okay what are some characteristics in one word so we talk about driven, intense, productive, independent um, that piece is really meaningful to me there. Diligent, self-motivated, and again we, we come back to self-motivated because it's about my own list and what I need to accomplish. I don't need somebody to dangle a carrot in front of me in order to get me to take a step forward because the step forward is what I'm hungering for um, from, from day one if I'm an achiever. We talk about the value I bring, the role I play, the needs I have, and my motivation. As I talk to people with Achiever, um, which is what I do quite a bit, but I do it really on purpose to prepare for our theme Thursdays. I'll seek out people who I know are um, have a good handle on their themes and can tell me what it is for them. What comes up over and over again in terms of, um, I ask them this question about what needs do you have or how can somebody honor that theme for you? And what I hear quite a bit of is get out of my way. In the nicest, most graceful way, they say, uh, if you can provide an environment that is free of red tape, free of obstacles, let me 
let me move forward. I think it's th that's something that really honors a, an achiever theme. Sometimes that can also mean that you need, and we're going to get into this now, you need a complementary partner who can help you make sure we're still on the same track. So if priorities shift, um, if we fail to acknowledge the effort the achiever has made, then we really fail to acknowledge them as a human being. So things are changing all the time. How do we make sure to keep those achievers dialed in, keep reconciling our lists of what we need to do versus where are we going? Very good. I want to dive into, we're going to do a new segment. We haven't done this before on Theme Thursday, and, and you and I have been practicing this, so hopefully it'll be great as we go forward. We'll get better as we go along. We wrote a book that we released uh, late last year called uh, Expanding Your Strengths. It's available on Amazon only in the United States for right now. So if this is 2017 when you're listening to this, chances are we've got it available in every market at this point. But it is available on Amazon. Just search Expanding Your Strengths. Kurt Liesfeld, who used to host this with me um, last year, that was his book uh, that he put together. Mike and I are going to give you some live demos of it. And if you purchase the book, you get access to an app. Uh, and you're going to see the 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 results of the app and I think how beneficial this could be um, um, for you. So something, we're going to live demo it for you. This will be a segment in every single one of these Theme Thursday Season 2 going forward. And so if you're if you're watching on uh, Hangouts at this point, you should now be seeing full screen what the app looks like. If you're watching on the Blab, uh, you'll see it as the bottom box that is below. And, uh, and Micah, as we think about, uh, we, we polled the audience, and by the way, this is a way to, you should be part of our Facebook group, facebook.com slash groups slash call to coach. That's our webcasting page. Every week I will poll you guys there and say which themes out of all 33 do you want to match with the theme of the week. And we did that this week and we had well over 200 people respond to that. And these top four, the four that we've picked today uh, that we're going to go through, we were going to go through responsibility, relator, maximizer, adaptability. Those what you, those were your suggestions. And we're, again, we're going to do it every week. You can vote in on it. Then we're going to look at activator, which is next week's going into it. So Micah, I'm going to ask you, I have uh, Achiever and Responsibility up. Let's dig in a little bit. What does that mean? And then we'll go through some of the components. Sure. Um, pretty awesome that we get the opportunity to do this. Um, Kurt was so fantastic at being able to just use the right amount of words to describe what that um, incredible you start to weave themes together. I always thought he had communication. It turns out he didn't. <laughs> but he thought quite a bit about this. And so the first statement that you're going to see when you pull up this app um, is really the statement that Kurt started writing. And he started that as a, as a project on Twitter. He thought, okay, could I combine every single theme with another theme, just one by one, and look at those pairings? And could I limit myself to 140 characters or less? If you've taken one of our Gallup Certified Coach trainings, you will recognize these sentences or these short pieces as what came in the paired up booklet. Um, so the last time I taught this course, I had somebody who was just crushed. They couldn't buy extras of the paired up booklet. It is exclusive to your experience in that classroom. Um, but those are included in the Expanding Your Strengths um, packet here, and they're the first thing that you see. Um, it, in general, this concept of theme dynamics, I think, is what um, what I love the most about the intricacy of strengths, about the unique fingerprint that you have when you take a look at your themes. Um, even if you're only working with your top five, there's ten different pairs that you can take a look at, and that's that's really the beauty. I saw in the chat function earlier somebody said, "Well, what if I don't agree with the traits that I have for achiever?" Well, it's probably because your achiever is combining with another theme and looking for you like something very different than just solely that that one theme that we're looking at in isolation. So, no one theme lives alone. We're going to take a look now at what happens if it lives and works and plays with uh, five other themes. So achiever and responsibility to go first here. Uh, you get things done sometimes because it feels so good and sometimes because you promised someone you would. So when you take a look at achiever plus responsibility, let's just first look at those in isolation. We've talked about achiever. Now responsibility is about following through on what you say you would do. People with high responsibility, if they say they'll do something, they may as well tattoo it to their forehead because it's about following through on what you've promised. When you look at those together, what I think it does more than anything is it clarifies uh, the what I've promised. It, it, it clarifies the execution side of it. So responsibility is all about, um, I think, 
it can look like a relationship building theme uh, because it's about loyalty because when you say you'll do something you do it so other people can be attracted to you thinking that that's how you build relationships um, but it really is about it's an executing theme so these two together are about getting it done and are about getting it done in a way that is probably a little more external so achiever again is self-motivation responsibility adds a flavor of getting it done makes me happy but serving others makes me even happier. Micah, we said we were going to skip that uh, portion on the front page when we think about those ideas of pairings. We're going to go over this one time because it's the same on each page mm -hmm. when we think about Achiever, but let's talk through those four that are listed there. Sure. So looking at complementary themes, um, and yeah, I have to reiterate here, any theme can be complementary. There's no such thing as opposite themes. Some of them, the only the closest we get to that is statistically unlikely. But if you've got both of those in your top five, you're probably not feeling like you're incompatible with yourself. Uh, it's just what happens and what doesn't. So any theme can be complementary. Um, we just throw out these four as an example here. So Achiever plus Relator is that ability to balance that strong performance orientation with a strong relationship orientation. So looking at how can I make sure that together with the people who I enjoy being with, the Relator side, a small group of people, how are we moving forward? How are we getting things done? Achiever plus focus is about um, ensuring that your intense efforts will consistently be aimed at the important priorities. My husband has both of these in his top five, achiever and focus. It means that when he is in the zone, he can go for days on, on executing. So focusing, focus is about sort of, I like to call it um, beneficial tunnel vision. When you add achiever to it, it's we can really be there in one place and we can keep moving forward very quickly. Um, I remember when we first got onto Game of Thrones, I had brought him with me on a, on a work trip and I had to work during the day and he got to you know hang out in this great hotel room and we discovered Game of Thrones and we were three seasons behind and he didn't sleep for like two days because he was in the zone, nothing else mattered, he had to get through those seasons. So that beauty of Achiever and Focus I think is real intensity. Achiever and Maximizer is about polishing what you're going to get done. So Maximizer is all about um, not just being okay with good but pushing for the best. Sometimes it's called perfectionism, but the benefit of it is being able to polish the pearl until it's as, as good as it possibly can be and then seeing a way that it could be even better. When you add Achiever to that, again, you add a little bit of clarity. If you're, if you're directing others, you can say, okay, this could be better and here's how. Um, it's also about making sure that your efforts are directed in the exact right place that's going to make the greatest impact. And then Achiever and Futuristic, I think it grounds where we're going in the future. So Futuristic can, can get pretty conceptual. It's about spending all of your time 5, 10, 15 years out into the future, about being really comfortable imagining what could be and isn't yet. When you add Achiever to that, it's like you've got feet on the floor and head in the clouds at the same time. Awesome. Well, here's the best part of this tool, right, as we dig through it. So I'm just going to go up, and uh, the next one we want to look at is a Relator. And so I'm going to leave Achiever in place. I'm going to drop that down and choose Relator. And we are going to flip over to that. That's available in the Hangouts. Let me do the same thing in the uh, in Blab. And so now we are seeing, and both of those, those last two are both in the executing theme. As we look at Relator, that comes into a relationship building theme. Micah, work us through this one. So cool, and Jim, you're you're ro you are crushing this. I just, I don't know how you're watching all these things all at once, but it's it's you, my arranger. It's fantastic. It's a um, ranger that loves to do this. So, I love so you it. can see the top of the, the page that you can see here if you're on Hangouts or even on Blab as well. You can type in Achiever and Relator and click Find Out Now and it brings all this up for you. Your followers are going to think you're a genius. Mm -hmm. <laughs> a good coaching tool, if you're, if you're working with somebody, just bring it up on your laptop, turn it towards them, and you can roll through these in various combinations. So it's a great tool to just start a conversation with, but uh, go ahead on this one. Yeah, it's immediately going to help you personalize it. So Achiever plus Relator, for you there's no better feeling than working hard with a few good friends to get a big job completed. I talked about this briefly when we went through the complementary themes for Achiever, um, but it really is about how do you enhance those relationships that you have. Relator's commonly misunderstood because it sounds like all you want is relationships and people very quickly skip to, oh, then they must be out there you know, winning everybody over and being everybody's best friend. The truth of Relator is they 
their power and their edge comes from being very selective and really getting a lot of energy from close, deep, um, very, usually a small number of relationships. So if you add Achiever to that, I think it really enhances what you can do with the people that you're close to. Um, it, it, it says, I trust you, I want you in my inner circle, I'm in yours, and we're going to do things together. Don't you always think that achiever relator is that person in the office who always gets the birthday parties scheduled correctly? They get they remember anniversaries. They the the group events are important for them, and these are big generalizations. But I I always just I always think of the combo because they want to get these 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 things done, but they care about people deeply and know deep things about them and know the important dates that to, to remember, and they're going to check those events off. As they, as they do that in their lives. So I always think they're the office party throwers who make sure everybody gets, you know, that gets done. And, uh, and we've got a few in the chat room, I think, uh, as, as we've been going through. I've been having them in the chat room kind of put the combos in there. And so uh, I always like to think of it, for me, it's especially when I think about office, uh, how, how dynamics work in the office, because sometimes that's so much different than at home. You know, and what does a, an achiever uh, relator look like in the home context with their maybe maybe a parent with their children, in in helping them accomplish those things that they know are most important to their children. Right? Oh, some absolutely. Of, yeah, yeah. Some of those. But you know what I love about that, Jim, is that you said it's the things. So um, there. Oftentimes in some of our selection interviews, we ask people, how do you build rapport? Somebody with relator and achiever could tell you, here's what I do to build rapport. I remember anniversaries. I throw parties. I, uh, I take my kids to the museum. Uh, and it's, it's how we operationalize that desire for deep relationships, I think. So it's, it's closeness with a plan. Yeah, and even in the definition relator, you know, they find deep satisfaction in working hard with friends, relatives, neighbors, right? You could add all those things. And that, that working hard and that achiever come together so nicely when, when, when we think about that. Okay, We're, we do want to uh, get people in here, so let's move on to the next one. Uh, when we think about Maximizer, let's flip this one over. Maximizer is number three for me, and let's bring it up there. It should be Find It Now. And I'll bring this up on the Blab side. Go ahead, Micah. So now we get a look at an executing theme plus an influencing theme. We talked about the difference of those before, looking at Achiever and Command. Now let's blend them together. So Achiever plus a Maximizer. You have high expectations for quality and quantity for yourself and others. You must always do more and do better. Um, maximizer is about doing the very best you can. We talked about this briefly before, um, about being able to take something from good to great. Um, typically, maximizers aren't quite so interested in taking you know, everything up one level. That'd be more developer. Whereas maximizer can be a little bit choosy at where I'm going to invest because I want to make sure that it's going to be the very best um, use of my time or use of my resources. Um, think about perhaps the dynamics of how somebody might um, actually actually operate in an office if they had maximizer and achiever. It's about being able to quickly zero in on where you're going to get the best ROI and be able to say, and here's how, um, and have the energy to do it. So without achiever, maximizer can be a little conceptual. It can be probably um, you could give a great opinion on a focus group of stakeholders on how something could be better, but you might not necessarily care about the effort it would take to get there. Um, when you've got Maximizer and Achiever, it's about salivating at both of those, being able to see how something can improve and want to be the person to do it. Yeah, quality assurance engineer, I always think of in this, both in physical and then like in a software standpoint, we put these two together and oftentimes they, there are people who, they, you know, uh, emails that don't have misspellings in them bother them, those kinds of things, right? Because it, 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 it affects their doing. It's like, Absolutely. no, I don't, I, and I can't send this email to anybody now because it's got misspellings in it and I've got to correct those for you before I send it on. And so when we, we often think of getting things done and getting them done with quality, these two come together uh, uh, well to drive that, um, to drive that. Okay, let's look at the last one of the four that you guys picked. Remember, you pick these each week. And so if you want to influence how we do this week in and week out, join us on the coach's blog or on the uh, coaches group on Facebook, facebook.com slash groups slash called the coach. And the last one we're going to take a look at is adaptability. And so we'll bring that up. My one of, This is my uh, one of my son's number one. And I didn't really realize 
what this was until I lived with it. So I want to <laughs> talk a little bit about adaptability. I can talk about adaptability for days. Four of the five people in the family I grew up with have it. Um, I'm one of them. So <laughs> adaptability is about being present in the moment and about the present moment being more important than anything else. Uh, sometimes it surprises people that it's a relationship building theme. I think the key to why it falls into that domain is adaptability is about giving people what they need when they need it, often at the expense of what you've already planned. Um, people with high adaptability really enjoy the the change uh, and, and they get a high out of a change in plan, um, a spontaneous sort of way to execute things. Um, so it's about the moment trumping everything else. The cool thing about blending that with Achiever is I think it can help calm people. So uh, adaptability on its own can be a little bit hard to follow. It can feel flaky. Raw adaptability can. Um, I've got it in my top five, so I can tell you, <laughs> you know, all the raw things very easily. Um, it can feel like it's it's difficult to follow because you're you're tuned into something that most people are not, and that's the current moment. Um, and so it can be a little bit difficult to predict. Um, and when you add Achiever to it, it's that ability to say, I'm going to be flexible, but I've got a forward progress here. I'm, I'm going to hunger for what can get done, and what can get done maybe is going to change. Without adaptability, people with Achiever can get incredibly frustrated. We talked about this before. If priorities change, because they've still got their list, um, they've still got their, you know, their priorities that they're putting effort in. Um, with adaptability, I think it can add some agility to Achiever. So it adds that ability to say, okay, I've got a list and it's probably a lot more short term than it would be without adaptability. It's probably a, lot, a list about what needs to happen urgently um, and it's probably a lot more flexible. So don't confuse adaptability and flexibility. It's not just that you have no plan and you don't care what happens. Um, it's that you get um, a little bit more awareness of the moment than anybody else does. So I think the easiest way to describe how these two play together is adaptability probably shortens the time frame that Achiever is thinking of when you're considering starting every day at zero, being able to uh, to really finish every day and and dust that off and think about what are you going to do again tomorrow. I think of an emergency or EMT or something with the with these themes when I think about that who needs to get stuff done and done in order and done right, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, how important is that that we they they go through the checklist when they're treating someone, but with high adaptability, they can they can change at any moment, right? That list can change based on the condition of the of their patient. And so it's one of those kinds of things where they can play those two together by, hey, I'm going to work through this checklist, but if my patient condition changes, I can go to the next checklist and change very easy and move and adapt uh, uh, based on that. So I think that's a good way. Even when sure. we think about software development, this is one of those areas where it's changing all the time, right? We were in agile processes, and so one who needs to, I think, a good project manager that has these two, this, this combo would lead a great agile team because it's, you, you just don't know all the time where things are going to go. And so someone who's locked in won't be able to adapt as fast. So Right. Um, and let's not forget that there's an element of completion to Achiever. So you're still going to be able to at least loop back, even if you decide that something isn't a priority. You, it might change what completion looks like. So uh, you've still got that Achiever. It's still important for you to cross things off that are on your list. So it's about not dropping it based on what happens in the moment. Yeah, and next, so let's cover next week because I'm excited yeah. about this. This is my number number five for me, so we're going to talk about uh, Activator uh, next week. And so uh, let's throw that up, and w what does that say? Pretty exciting here. So Achiever Plus next week's Activator. With urgent initiative, you push others to get started so that a critical job will get finished as soon as possible. You want to hire that person, right? <laughs> like, that sounds awesome. Activator is all about moving others to action. Sometimes Achiever and Activator get mixed up. Um, it's next week because it's alphabetical, but it works out so well because we can compare and contrast these two. Um, sometimes people think that it's, you know, both are about getting things done, and they are. The way that I r sort of reconcile uh, their differences in my mind is to understand that Achiever is an executing theme. It's, it's complete it, get it done. Activator is an influencing theme. It's let's get started. And it's not just I'm getting started. It's how do I sense those opportunities to begin? And how do I help move people into the direction that we're, we're starting to take action? Yeah. And, you know, for me, like I get accused sometimes. People say, do you have Achiever? Because I do so many things. Mm. They say, is that Achiever? And I have to say it's my Activator 
because that's five for me. Um, uh, but there's an element for me is I've gotten more mature in, in that activator. I used to just activate, 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 ne never get anything done. And as I've gotten older and realized how painful that is, I've put things in place. Uh, for me, it's putting partners in place. So woo and it's a woo and relator to bring together. Those are both in the top ten. To have to find complementary partnerships to help me get things done. So while I start them, I see them through to completion by having other people help me uh, get those done. Micah, you're a you're a perfect example of this and what we're doing with the new theme Thursday. You're partnering with me, me by myself, not capable of getting this done. I can start it, and we're going to get all 34. I mean, when I was a kid, I couldn't get 34 of anything done in my, you know. But w we made it through the first season and made it through the second because I've had great complementary partners help me get through. And I think that's really the key as we think about strengths in, the, in terms of teams, that it's important to start pairing those things together as we look at these, not just single strengths, but even dynamics, and then pair those together as the teams to say, how do we get the most out of the people that were there working together in a way that's complementary? So excited for what uh, we've got coming up. Anything else you want to say as we as we kind of wrap up this part? We're going to take live calls here in a second. So if you're in the if you're in the chat room on the live page, I'm going to drop the link to the blab. Now, not everybody you have to have, you have to use Chrome or Firefox. I think Opera will work as well. IE will not work. So you'll be frustrated if you only use IE and come over. We'd love to have you come over to Blab. We're going to take people who have Achiever is number one. Super easy to come in and get that done. But as we're as folks are setting up for that, Micah, anything else you want to say on uh, on Achiever? Yeah, so, you know, at the end of the day, it's it's let's get it done, or, or I got it done. It's about get it done, um, and if you can really understand that and appreciate that the getting done is really the way that they that they recharge. I think sometimes it's it's hard if you're in relationships with people with Achiever or if you're, you know, any kind of relationship, it's hard to see as they're listing off their list of what did I do today, how important it is to listen to that list important it is to appreciate that list um, and I found a great quote here from Emerson that says the reward of a thing well done is to have done it that's in its simplest piece I think what Achiever is all right very cool I'm gonna open the seat I've asked Carol Ann McGuire if she would kind of prime the pump for us and come in on blab and she's gonna join us right now so this is as easy as this is we prepped it a little bit last night to make sure it was going to work. But Carol Ann, welcome, and uh, glad you could jump in here. And then let me unmute Micah so I can hear. Carol Ann, can you hear us? I can. Perfect. Hi. Hi. Thanks for being here. Hi. How are you? Great. Good to have you. It looks like you've got a green screen, like you might do the weather. I do. Oh, I could do the weather. No, I'm actually working with a group of first graders, and we're doing green screening today. So I'm just in this awesome. space. Yeah, it's awesome. kind of fun. Okay, so Carol Ann, tell us, Achievers won for you, and that's kind of the goal. And by the way, congratulations on being Achiever and being the very first guest to jump in here on Achiever <laughs> to get this done. That's a true sign of an Achiever. But what we're looking for, I mean, how does that give us some idea as in relation to your top five? How does that play out for you? How do you, if you were to tell someone, this is my Achiever, how, how does that play out? I need to stay, I do need to stay busy, but I need to be working in a forward motion. So I don't know if that makes sense. I just can't be busy just to um, be shuffling papers. That would drive me insane. I have to be moving something forward, whatever that is, whether it's church or Sunday school or school or my businesses. I have to be moving things in a forward direction constantly. And there's no, there's no downtime. I don't want downtime. Downtime would drive me insane. So what do you do on the weekends? Work. I love it. It's funny because my husband's like, you know, you need to just take a break and sit by the pool. I could sit by the pool for about 10 minutes and then I have to do something. Because my in my head, all these things are happening that I could be getting done instead of just sitting here. But that's what makes me happy. Like it was interesting when you were talking about the roses and sitting and smelling the roses. That's nice for like a second for me. But after that, give me a job to do with the roses and I'll be perfectly happy to be there. I just want to be trimming them or arranging them, something. Doing something with them. Caroline, did you say your top five? And I missed hey, Jim, it. I can't I'm, hear you. trying to help the chat room. Oh, yeah. Hold on one second. Keep going. 
Arranger, learner, focus, positivity, and woo. Uh, Micah, you need to unmute me on your blab. She probably can't hear us. Uh, un Hilda, we'll type it in here. I can't yeah. hear you, man. Now I can. It's my fault. Oh, good. Yeah, your blab was muted because of the, the um, what we were doing. There you go. Real time. Before. I'm sure someone else needed to know that. You, you, you have to yeah. unmute him yourself. You do, you do have to do that. So, Carol Ann, think about, and I put this in the in the chat room or in the uh, the Facebook group today. Mm -hmm. When you think, what's your best pair to your achiever? So, when you think oh. about of the bottom of the other four, which one of those pairs best? And and maybe it's based on the day, or maybe it's based on what you're doing. But but what do you think pairs best? And you can you can pick two or three if you want. Yes, that's a that's really hard to choose. My I. Focus, I'd probably would say would be my number one because I can get in a zone and shut everything out. But there's a bad side to that too. So when my kids come in and I'm in that place, they're like, Mom, look at me in the eyes. Because they know if I have to actually pull myself away from my computer to look at them, then I'm actually focusing on them. But if I don't look up at them, we could have a conversation. I could be saying yes to all kinds of stuff and never realized that we actually even had a conversation. So focus is good. It, it's, it's a good one and a bad one, I guess, with my, with my achiever. But I like them all because obviously positivity, I could work for long periods of time and be really happy, you know, be done with it. And in the middle of it, even though it's a hard work day, I could still have a great attitude. So I like them all. They're all a part of, you know, they're all, I don't know how to, I don't know how to pull them apart like that. That's awesome. So when you think about other people you've worked with who've really managed to honor your achiever, what have they done? Let me be. Uh, if, if you really want to honor the fact that I'm a hard worker and I have focus, those two together, then put me somewhere where I can really focus it. But I have woo too, so I need lots of people. I need, I need, I like to be busy in a busy place. Mm, that's so a really I cool way to talk about. Lots of stuff around me happening and I can pop up every once in a while, pay attention, but Zen, it's easy for me to zoom back in, but I like where there's a lot of activity. I wouldn't do good in a cubicle where I have to just be by myself. Carolyn, we were talking about this last night when we were testing this. You helped me. By the way, your achiever jumped in and helped me get this <laughs> tested. And you and I have been a partnership a little bit when we think mm. about some of the things you do in your business. And my, we both have woo, but I, going back to that earlier conversation, I have this, I have this activator that is just wants to light fires in people. I don't necessarily want to do it, but when I see good things in other people, I want to say, hey, have you thought about doing this? That has played nicely to your achiever because you've done oh, yeah. most of the things that we've done and they've, they've been, you've made them really successful. When I think about your book, the dog tags, rockyourstrengths.com. Yeah. I mean, I think back to two years ago uh, when we first started talking about your website and where it was then versus the work that you've done now. And I just say to uh, Caroline, you might want to think about this and you're like, okay. And then I don't hear from you and then it's fixed. Right. And so Good complimentary, I think, between you and me, good oh, complimentary yeah. partnership and, and, and me getting you going. And yet we both, so last night we we're on Blab, just goofing off, testing things, and our woo kicks into high gear. And people, you know, right, we had people kind of joining us, right? Online, and we're evangelizing StrengthsFinder, right? <laughs> that in was the process awesome. It, where our woo comes together and, and does that. So for me, that's a lot of fun. I mean, again... This is really powerful. I think strengths is really powerful in the context of the yeah. individual, and I get that. But in teams, I think its power is exponential, mm -hmm. right? If we want to talk about exponential Absolutely. growth with strengths, I think it, the context of teams. So let me encourage you, strengths finder enthusiast. You're listening to this. We often, I often joke. I have a joke that sometimes this the movement becomes name it, name it, name it, right? Where we all we do is talk about the themes and we don't actually apply them. One, we want you to apply them, name it, claim it, and aim it. The aim it part's really the important part. What are you doing to increase your own performance? And then two, man, what is, how is it working in the people around you? So important to get those folks around you themed out so you know who they are and then have those uh, discussions. Micah, Even for any, coaches, oh, it's ahead. important. Even for coaches, you know, the people that are in that place, people sharpen you, you know, find that person that you can bounce ideas off of and that can really push that theme into high gear that you can really 
kind of see where the throttle is, you know, just really expand what, who you are. And Jim, I've really appreciated that because you have really pushed me in ways I'd never really even thought about until you said it. And I was like, Oh, done. I'm totally all over that. No. Cool. Hey, I'll remind you, if you want to jump in and do what Carol Ann's doing, got an open seat right there. If you just join us, you got a webcam open with a microphone. Most webcams have it built in. You can join us, so we'll let you in the seat. Carol Ann, we'll drop you out when we get somebody else Thank new you. in uh, from this standpoint. Mike and I are going to go just a few more minutes. And so as we get coaches used to or strengths enthusiasts used to this platform, we will do this every week. This will be a part of what Micah and I do, make this available to you. It'll also land in the RSS feed. So you get an opportunity to listen to that if you subscribe to this as a podcast, which you can do on your Android device or your iPhone. It's a, just go to either one of those and search for Theme Thursday or Gallup's Theme Thursday, and uh, that will kind of show up. Micah, when you think of Achiever and you think of some of the executive coaching you did, it you 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 saw this earlier, but we get this question all the time. Does Achiever have to be in someone's top five for them to be an executive? We, we get this strengths bias that Kurt was always worried about. W what do you say to that for someone who comes in and they're in a leadership role, but they don't have a command or an Achiever in this case? Mm -hmm. Um, it's so important to bring us back to remembering that Strengths Finder doesn't tell us what we do, but how we do it. Um, and that research is right there to back it up and say, Strengths Finder isn't just explaining the different ways that people can behave. What it's explaining is starting at the very end by assessing successful human beings and then working backwards and saying, okay, how were you successful? If you pick up a copy of Strengths-Based Leadership, we actually profile four different uh, leaders who were successful and have demonstrated success who can talk about being a leader by achieving is one thing. But many people uh, find success by building relationships, find success by getting in and influencing, or find success by uh, really just spending time thinking. So you can be a fantastic leader with Achiever. I think there's lots of ways how we've described today why Achiever could make you successful. But it's also really important to realize you can get things done through other themes as well. I mean, Jim and I don't have Achiever. Don't tell everyone else at Gallup. Apparently, it's a very important one to have here. But we're here with you. We got stuff done. Uh, and so it's about being curious about yourself and asking yourself, what is it within me that's going to help me be a great leader? Or what is it within me that's going to help get stuff done? Very cool. Very cool. Uh, Carol Ann, we got Becky in. We're going to drop you off. Thanks for coming in, Carol Ann. I appreciate it. Great job. Thank you so much. Have fun, you Becky. Better. Thanks. Good having you. <laughs> Bye. Hey, Becky, good to see you on here. Uh, we had you recently on Call to Coach. Actually, Carol Ann was on Call to Coach too, and, and appreciate your time doing that. Tell cool. us, walk us through your Achiever a little bit. How's that work for you? Well, Achiever works for me. It, I, it, it is the thing that makes me work, I guess, is probably how that goes. Um, I have Achiever, Arranger, Learner, Belief, and Connectedness. And I think um, one of the questions you asked, Carol Ann, that I was interested in kind of thought through is like, you know, what is my favorite pair between my achiever and, um, and, and my others, uh, other four. And I think for me, it's connectedness because achiever unbridled is a ridiculous talent. Like it goes all to that raw part of it. It's like, yeah, you can get things done, but to the detriment of your own body and everybody else around you, at least that's how it has it has shown up in my life at times. Um, ask my husband or my children aren't probably old enough quite, but they would say so if if uh, if uh, if they could uh, put their finger on it. But connectedness for me brings me uh, back to the moment and helps me um, temper that achiever in in a healthy way, um, not in a way that's like, oh no, I don't, I don't think that this is a good talent, but in a way that says, okay, how is this moment that I'm working in right now connected to the past and to the future? And is it something that is going to add to my productivity or the productivity of somebody else? Is it something that's going to um, benefit the people around me or the cause that I'm working towards or kind of my overall life theme and values? Um, and I, I think it's what allows me to not trample over everybody when I'm when I'm really allowing connectedness to speak up. Yeah. So are you saying that can that that connectedness can be like a little bit of a governor in a sense that giving reason and purpose to the to the things that you do? Uh, we talked about strategic, but in this 
in, and I hate to use the word, but in this context, it <laughs> works. It works really well, right? I mean, it's, it gives you those pieces of the why, not just doing, but why am I doing what I'm doing and allows maybe a little governor on that to kind of keep that, uh, to keep the achiever uh, in. Does that, does that make sense? Does that ring? Yeah. Yeah. Kind of in check a little bit, you know, it yeah. kind of puts it in check to say, uh, you know, is this, is this a healthy use of this talent right now? And, um, sometimes it's not uh, actually kind of oftentimes because it's so, it's such a strong, as you said, Micah, like an energizing thing. It's like, man, two o'clock in the morning and I are way more acquainted than we should be because <laughs> of this. I, it, it does keep me up. It does give me energy. It does make me feel like, oh man, I don't need to sleep. But six o'clock in the morning when I have three little alarm clocks waking me up, um, that I, I'm still, I'm, I'm kind of toasted. So I'm not in the end, even though it was energizing and I sacrificed sleep, I wasn't really using it productively or beneficially. So those are some of my thoughts. Yeah. No, some good ones. Micah, any, any thoughts from your side? Yeah. So when you think about achiever, oftentimes a lot of people who have it and get it right away say, yep. All right. That's great. You know, what else, but what is it for you that helps you stretch that achiever? What does achiever optimized look like? Hmm. Interesting. Um, I, I think optimized for me looks like not bowling people over. It looks <laughs> like, um, you know, connectedness is my, I feel, is my only relationship strength in my top 10, which, and I say it's not a very strong relationship strength uh, in terms of like, or obvious, I should say. Um, and so for me, in some, some ways I've learned that I need to put people on my list and that helps me to connect with people and to kind of um, optimize that achiever. So it's, it's, not just keeping my back to my husband or my coworkers or the people that I manage and kind of keeping my head down and, and working away, but it's okay. Well, not only do I, do I know in my head that this relationship is a good idea, but I also have it on my list. And so once I do turn around and connect with you and make meaningful time with you, then uh, I can check it off my list as well. And so, and, and, I think that's one way that I've just a real simple way that I've learned to kind of optimize achiever and use it um, in all aspects, not just in the project that's in front of me at the time. Cool. Oh, very cool. Uh, Becky, thanks for jumping in. We're, sure. we're coming up on our time here. Thanks for being courageous. Enough. I know I was, I was like, okay, I'll play your game. I know we need people to do this. Like, I'm not I, the woo. I'm not the what I'm, I'm like, Oh, mm, okay. Yeah, sure. No, I appreciate it. I knew if we started with Achiever, we would get <laughs> folks who would get this done. That's a great way to start. I didn't plan it that way. It's just yeah, like, maybe not starting with deliberative or something. It was, yeah, no, we we never get anybody uh, in here. But uh, <laughs> Becky, thanks, thanks for jumping in. Mike and I are going to wrap this up, but thanks great. for jumping in. Cool. Appreciate it. Thanks. Take Bye. care. We'll uh, we'll lock the seats, Micah. I think a successful first run of Theme Thursday. What do you think? That was super fun, Jim. Well done. You know what? I think it's all about finding different ways to wrap our head around these themes so that what you said about name it, name it, name it, it's a really big danger. Strengths identification is not the same as strengths development. And hopefully what we can help people move toward is what does development and application look like? How do we really help you um, use these tools to become part of the fabric of how you operate every day? So I hope today we offered you a bunch of different ways to think about Achiever. Um, at the end of the day, it is about getting stuff done. So I'm proud that we got this one done. Yay. We um, will say if this is uh, for, for many of you, you joined us on the journey of the first time and there were some kinks to get worked out. And so We'd love to have you come in. I love your feedback. I got some feedback right away in the chat room from that. We'd love your feedback on this. We'll continue this series throughout the year. We've got them all scheduled out. If you want to get a, a complete copy of the schedule that's coming up, Eventbrite is the best place to go. So gallop.eventbrite.com. All of our webcasts, including Call the Coach, uh, are available on there. And, uh, it, of course, we always record these. So if you cannot make it live, uh, they're recorded and available for you. You can download or watch them uh, later. This one will be a little bit of a challenge because we're going to stitch the Hangouts version and we're going to stitch the Blab version together as one video as we make the switch over. That may be something we do every week, I'll be honest with you, because the experience when we're going through the theme dynamics is so much better on Hangouts. But the interactivity that we get on Blab is way better. So that may be something that we do in the future. If you weren't able to make it into Blab to get it done, it's okay. Keep trying. If you have questions, you can't get it in. I can uh, work with you to get those done. If you have never caught a live show 
I'm just going to say it. You might want to start trying to join us because they are going to be good. And they're going to be good because you're going to help us out with them. And uh, in the future, we'll uh, try and get more callers in as we jump in. Just have to have a webcam and a microphone. You saw both Carol Ann and, and Becky came in very successfully. And there'll be opportunities for you to interact um, as well. Remind everyone to take full advantage of all the resources we have available at the Gallup Strength Center. Just gallupstrengthcenter.com. Send us your questions, comments. Uh, if you'd like to be a guest blogger, we have that available as well. Send us an email, coaching at gallup.com. Just put guest blogger in the subject line. And by the way, Micah, you're the boss of the blog. We have the boss on yeah. the call. Thanks for doing all that you do for the blog. I might just be the most curious rather than the boss, but please let us know what you want to write about. A great blog is about Clifton Strengths Finder or coaching or some aspect of both of them put together. <laughs> yeah, no good. And and so you you got the blog boss. That's what we're going to call you from now on, the blog boss. Uh, it'll right be my here. mafia name. I love it. It's good. Yeah, that is your mafia name. I'm I'm uh, Jimmy the Polster. If you're the blog <laughs> boss, then I'm Jimmy the Polster. <laughs> We want to remind you to join our Facebook groups, our YouTube page. We have iTunes links and RSS feeds if you want to download these uh, and listen to them offline. iPhone and Android apps are available for you. If you can't remember your top five, we've got an app to help get that right there on your phone, all free for you. And we want to thank you for joining us here in weekly week one of the Weekly Strengths Wisdom Program that we have week going forward. We'll do 30 three more of these over the next 37 weeks or so. And we, we'd be excited for you to join us. Mike and, I, Mike and I will hang tight here in Blab for just a few minutes to get a little feedback from you in the chat room. But if you found this helpful, we'd ask you that you share it. Just throw it up on social media. It may be a great opportunity for you to share it in your networks. And, uh, and with that, we'll say goodbye, everybody.